In January 2021, COVID forced serial entrepreneur Wayne Hamlet's event hire business into liquidation. Two months later, Wayne declared bankruptcy, losing everything, and got a job as a real estate agent. Not one for giving up, Wayne launched an idea that I think has huge potential, and I reckon you will too. In fact, if you're a business owner, then you need it. It's as simple as that. It's a ridiculously inspiring episode 598 of the 13-year-old, award-winning, Small Business Big Marketing Podcast. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead, now here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of Show Some Gratitude Marketing. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, and I have an insatiable curiosity for uncovering marketing ideas that help businesses just like yours to grow. How do I do that? By having in-depth conversations with successful business owners from all over this crazy world. You, infinitely more importantly, though, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. And that, my friend, is why this podcast exists. Well done to you for finding it. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. If you're a long-time listener, you'll know I tend not to interview owners of businesses in the startup phase. There's plenty of other podcasts doing that. Plus, I want to make sure you only get learnings from established business owners who've got the runs on the board. However, there's always a but, isn't there? (laughs) Today's guest is in startup mode. So why do I break my rule? Because Wayne Hamlet's story is super inspiring, and I actually want to give him a leg up. He's a serial entrepreneur who's not afraid to have a crack. Unfortunately, to date, after starting three businesses, his efforts have been rewarded with little more than experience. Making matters worse, in January 2021, COVID forced Wayne's event hire business into liquidation. Two months later, he declared bankruptcy, losing everything, and he got a job as a real estate agent. Not one for giving up, at the age of 50, Wayne and his wife decided to roll the dice one more time and start Smile Fred an online greeting card and gift box business that makes it ridiculously simple for you to send personalized cards and gifts within five minutes from wherever you are, as long as you've got an internet connection. An idea that every single one of us could use to show gratitude to our clients, suppliers, staff, anyone. Basically, Wayne's business idea makes the world a better place. Now, by the way, this chat may contain a trigger for some of you, as Wayne's business journey certainly hasn't been all roses. (laughs) Whose has? If you're doing it tough and you don't have anyone to download to, then please call Lifeline or your local mental health wellbeing support service. Now, instead of starting with my guest answering a question, take a listen to this audio from the video that appears on SmileFred's website. It not only explains how SmileFred works, but why it exists, and a little bit about Wayne's backstory. It's a really, really good video. I'd encourage you maybe even to copy the structure of it for your own website. Take a listen. Hi, my name is Wayne Hamlet, the creator of SmileFred. SmileFred is designed to be able to send a personal card or gift box to anybody in the world. 2019, we had an event business uh, that unfortunately closed dramatically overnight due to COVID. We had um, some deaths in the family, some friends uh, had a person try to take their own life. Uh, We think if all of those people knew how much they were cared about, and you know, receiving something as little as a card in the mail just to let them know that they were loved. There's so much negativity in the world at the moment, uh, online, offline. Everybody's so focused on, on what's going wrong with the world instead of what's going right. My daughter said to me, Dad, why would you start a new business? We've lost everything, uh, why would you do all this again? And I said to her, mate, there's plenty of reasons to still smile. Uh, you know, we've got our family, our friends, our health, and our ability to have another crack. Uh, So that was the main reason behind uh, getting together and thinking of a business that we could create that had lots of smiles and lots of fun. 
Uh, I also want to combine that with uh, saving people time. My previous experience as a sales manager for a local business, uh, it took a lot of effort to be able to put together different size gifts, whether it was just a card for a new client uh, or a Christmas gift for a big client. So I wanted to make that process easy for people. So what previously was a half an hour or longer if you were doing gifts uh, process, uh, now all that can be done in five minutes time using small thread. We chose cards and gift boxes because people love receiving something with that personal message that spreads joy, spreads happiness. Uh, there's nothing better than receiving a gift from a loved one, opening it up and seeing that somebody cares. You can now just sit on your couch, order that, send it out in five minutes. Small Fred will take care of the lot. Uh, we think that's fantastic and we'd love Small Fred to be known as the place that spreads smiles around the world. The place that spreads smiles around the world. Well, I couldn't agree more. Wayne Hamlet, welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Podcast, mate. I actually think you're amazing. Thanks, Tim. Thanks very much. And humble. <laughs> <laughs> now, buddy, I, 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 incredible story. I love that video, and we're going to talk more about that video as this interview progresses. But having a powerful why video on a website ticks every, every marketing box in my book. Wayne, describe the events leading up to January 2021, when you were forced to liquidate your event hire business? So basically, Tim, I was sales manager at Xerox for 10 years. And towards the end of that time, uh, because we'd run a business previously, I sort of was looking forward to getting back into my own business again. Uh, so we started a business called Impact Lighting, uh, which hired out to events. Uh, light up letters, photo booths, uh, sparklers, uh, and a range of things for weddings and events. Uh, so the wife was running that on the side. Uh, it just started to grow really quickly. Uh, so I made the jump to, to get out of Xerox, uh, borrowed some cash, borrowed some more stock, and jumped in dim back lighting. So we basically had a, a five-year plan to be able to get rid of the debt and uh, grow the business. Had you had experience in this kind of industry before, Wayne? Oh, a little bit. You'd been to events, drunk beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'd done heaps of that. We'd run an audio-visual business before uh, from when we were 30 to 40, and we'd grown that from a startup in our lounge room to uh, a business that at the end turned over a couple of million. Uh, the problem with that business was we were just always putting it back into stock, uh, much like impact lighting in the end, but uh, as the business grew, we just needed more stock and more stock for both businesses. Uh, so I guess my way of growing a business at the time uh, through past experience was just borrowing for more stock. So we'd grown it to a level where we'd started to put on a couple of staff. And in the end, I guess it wasn't a great business model in that 30% uh, of our business was in Toowoomba, uh, but then 70% of our business was down in Brisbane and the Gold Coast, uh, just obviously due to being lots more events down there. Uh, so there was lots of travel uh, lots and lots of hours on weekends, you know, starting at three or four in the morning. Pretty capital intensive too, I would have thought. You'd have to buy a whole lot of expensive gadgetry and equipment. Yeah. The problem with the items that we hired out, light up letters, you couldn't just, you know, have one alphabet. You had to have multiples. So then we'd have seven or eight events at the one time. So you obviously needed lots and lots of letters. Uh, otherwise, you'd just be knocking back orders. So uh, the bigger we got, the more events we brought on, the more letters we purchased. And you couldn't just purchase one or two letters locally. We were getting them over from China, uh, spending 50000 at a time to get a couple of sets of letters. On the never-never or you had 50 large ones in the pocket? Uh, no, so we were borrowing uh, yeah. to be able to do it. Yeah. And, and hence the problem with the business model and the, the shock when COVID come along. I, I have this conversation every now and then with a guest and I, and I understand – I get the fact that debt doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing. Like, I fully understand that. But just talk to me. Tell me about the conversation you had with your wife when you got to go and borrow a hundred grand for two sets of alphabet to be flowing over from China. That I imagine the return on that is going to, it's not quick, you know, because you're not renting them out for 10 grand a pop. You know, you're probably renting them out for a hundred, hundreds of bucks a pop. So just tell me about that conversation where you go, yeah, let's borrow another hundred. We'll be right. <laughs> oh, I guess the, the wife's been brilliant. 
you know, over 20 or 30 years. She's just... So all, you're, you're the guilty party. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> uh, she's just uh, backed me all the time, I suppose. And, you know, we first started our first business when we were 20. Sorry, when we were 30. We would borrow to start a business, uh, work really hard, pay off the debt, borrow a bit more, pay it off. So, you know, that's just what we were used to, I guess, in our way of growing a business over 20 years. So, you know, you needed the letters. You couldn't just buy it in bits and pieces. So you had to buy a, a large amount and you had no choice but to pay it off over time. So COVID comes along at a very, well, it's never a good time. There is never a good time in the world for a pandemic, I've decided. However, it comes along and for you and having an events business and me being a conference speaker, mate, I feel your pain. I just didn't have a whole lot of dough invested. Did you see the writing on the wall real quick or did you just go, oh, this will blow over? Oh, I think initially we thought it would blow over. Uh, I'll never forget we were, I was setting up on a Saturday morning for a lady's wedding and I'd spent a couple of hours setting up photo booth letters, uh, festoon lights, and it got to the, the time of the wedding and just nobody showed up. And coming back through Brisbane, I, I just couldn't believe it, the the South Bank area, there was normally thousands of people, you know, along the shops there, and it was just a ghost town. And, you know, I guess for the first few weeks, you just thought it was going to blow over pretty quick. Um, I sat down after a month or two. We'd got a bit of a hand from the government because the position we were in at the time, we were very highly geared. Uh, and, again, we were just working hard, and we knew we had about two years left for a lot of the debt to disappear. Uh, when I'd made the jump from Xerox into the business, we'd borrowed some cash just to help uh, carry my wage up until we could, I could get in and grow the business. And it was all working, or everything was trajecting well, but yeah, just the income just shut down. It's really interesting. And I certainly, uh, this comment or sharing this is not meant to make you feel bad. I'm sure you felt bad enough. But I interviewed Jeremy Fleming, I think his name was. He had a business called Stage Kings. So he was a, he, he built, he was a scaffolder and he built the stages for all the big concerts. Yeah. Robbie Williams comes to town, he builds the stage. COVID comes along and he and his wife, they were in business together. Um, they pivoted within 24 hours, which I thought was incredible. They pivoted to flat pack furniture, started a business called ISO Kings. And, you know, you got to hand it to some people. I mean, I, I'd be, I would have been in your camp, mate. I would have been like, oh, this will blow over. We'll give it a month. She'll be, she'll be right. Typical Aussies. But I don't know what it was in Jeremy and his wife, but they went to work the morning after COVID was announced and lockdowns were announced, and they said to their staff, tell us about your, what you do on the weekends. Anyone got any hobbies? And one of their staff members put his hand up and said, I make flat pack furniture. The rest is history. Uh, and again, not, make to, not meant to make you feel bad because I would have been in your, in your camp, but it's just one of those moments in time where you thought, give it some time, and that time just didn't come. Yeah, look, I, I got some advice after that couple of months to to literally close down the business, you know, and and go into liquidation at that time. And at, at that stage, I think we had about a hundred thousand worth of pre bookings uh, for weddings, and we had everybody cancelling, rebooking, rescheduling. So I, I I went in a bit of a marketing mode. We started to spend a lot more on marketing. Um, I I don't know if you've seen the videos. I oh yes, up as I a have. <laughs> now, now, now you need to explain that because remembering podcasting is an audio medium, Wayne. But I, one of my questions here was it was a leading question. How desperate did you get in trying to save your events hire business? Can you explain what you did on the streets of Toowoomba, please? Yeah, just myself and a couple of mates who who own different businesses. We teamed up to try to spread the message, uh, don't cancel, postpone, uh, just to try to get everybody. We had a lot of people cancelling events and we were just saying, you know, don't cancel the event because you... Yeah, you, how did you say it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was dressed up as Wayne uh, on the corner there, which I thought well, I looked quite sharp, but the wife and kids disagree. You look terrible, mate. You, you were dressed <laughs> up. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd have to say... No, you were dressed up as a prostitute. I'm looking for some other nice way of saying it. But you were hairy chest. For those who can't see Wayne, which is all of you, he's got a very bald head. If he hopped off a Harley, you wouldn't have been surprised. And here you are walking the streets of Toowoomba, a very well-to-do town, uh, in fishnets and some awful, awful bloody short dress with your yeah. chesty, hairy chest hanging out. Yeah. Oh, it was a great amount of fun. And I, 
you know, that was the first ever video of Granda that went viral, so to speak. Well, for us, it got about 20,000 views and, and lots of attention on, you know, the message of don't postpone, don't cancel your event to postpone. But What was it? Because I did watch the video and I'll put the video in the show notes over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com because it is worth <laughs> Thanks, seeing. So, yeah, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. Pay me later. <laughs> But you had a hashtag, which was save events or something, um, which you'd walk. What was the intention? Was it to, to, to get attention and hopefully get a bit of media coverage? Was that the idea? Yeah, it was. And just there was a lot of other businesses starting to use the hashtag and, and starting to spread the message to postpone, don't cancel. And, you know, we definitely had a lot of clients that did postpone, but, you know, at the same time, there was just no event. So, you know, we us and everyone else in the industry not only had their events postponed once, but twice, but three times, and it just kept stretching out and out. Mate, I thought it was a great idea. I mean, it was a fun idea, and it was ne- it was never going to, you know, again with respect, it was never going to turn your business around. But I thought it was I thought it was a genius idea, and I think more business owners we should do more of that stuff. You know, yeah. do more fun stuff. You know, have the guts. And I tell you yeah. what, Wayne. You know, if I'd met you six months ago and you explained what you were going to do, get, dress up as a prostitute and walk the streets of Toowoomba trying to get attention for your business, I would have put a thousand bucks that you would never do it. But here we go. You've got you, clearly there's a bit of sweet transvestite underneath that, uh, <laughs> that yeah. masculine image. <laughs> now tell me, March 2021, you declare bankruptcy, you lose your house, your cars, your business. How low did you get and how did you pick yourself up? Yeah, last last year was very tough. We um been renovating our house for twelve years, so to lose that was tough. Yeah. <sighs> oh, sorry. Take your time, buddy. Absolutely fine. Take all the time you want. <sighs> then uh yeah, we the father in law passed away, so we oh. moved in with the uh mother in law. So, you know, there's plenty of nights you sit there at the age of fifty living with your mother in law <laughs> just thinking shit. You got to laugh, bottom. don't you? Yeah, you do. You know, but um, yeah, we we had a really tough year. We had a friend of ours take his own life. Um, somebody very close to us, uh, we haven't sort of shared that news. Also tried to take their own life, and uh, it was just a pretty miserable year all around. But yeah, life goes on. And look, and in that, you know, in in the video, you talked about that, and you talked about your daughter saying. Because you well, but your daughter asks dad, do you really need to start another business at the age of fifty? But at, at this point in time, the first thing you'd done is gone and get a job as a real estate agent, right? You, was that was that a kind of uh, an interim solution, or you thought, you know, this is this small business cape is too bloody hard. I'm just going to go and work for the man. Oh, at the time, I uh, went straight to work for a digital signage company uh, last year, so I was doing that when I come across your podcast. Uh, so. Basically, we had hired some of their equipment, and so they brought me on, which was great at the time, uh, to be able to sell their product. Uh, so that's where I come across your podcast. Basically, I was sorry to hear that driving to Brisbane and the Gold Coast <laughs> uh, two or three times a week, and uh, looked up something to listen to, and yeah, stumbled across your podcast. So I think I've gone from five eighty down to about three twenty now. So. Look, I, I, I've highlighted this email in the email that you sent me in regards to that, and I sort of read it out slightly egotistical, but I am fascinated. You said at the age of 50, I really didn't think we would start another business after three attempts over the last 20 years, but listening to your podcast every week helped me turn my attitude around. I mean, <laughs> I'm flattered, and I think that's awesome, and, and you're the reason I do this podcast, by the way. You know, people like you are the reason I do it. What was it that touched you? And I'm not looking, this is not like, I'm not looking for a testimonial, but I am interested to know what was it that flicked a switch on you to have another crack? Oh, well, I guess going back to that conversation with my daughter when she said, you know, why, she said the words to me, Dad, we've lost everything. Um, and, and it just popped straight into my head. And I said to her, mate, we've, we've still got our family, our friends, you know, we've got our health. There's so many people worse off than what we are. And yeah. and most importantly, I said, oh, you know, we've still got the ability to have another crack. Um, you know, I'd been listening to your podcast, you know, so many positive, uplifting stories of people just yes. starting businesses and growing them. And that just, you know, had me totally changed my mindset from thinking about how bad off we were throughout the year um, to starting to think of another business. So, which, you know, I've always prided myself on coming up with ideas and, 
and I've never had any fear of like our three businesses were unique. Uh, never had any fear of you know having a crack at trying something if it if it doesn't work. Uh, as per our last business, <laughs> you know, but we'll have another crack. But yeah, you get the job of the lighting company. You then get a job as a real that that was a that was short term. You then go and get a job as a real estate agent, which I would uh, probably requires you to go and get a real estate agent's license. Yeah, that's right. So that happened at the start of this year. Okay, so you've done that. You are now currently a full time real estate agent, and at what point? Did you look your beautiful wife in the eyes and go, darling, we're going again. We're going for a fourth. And we're not talking child here. We're talking business. Yeah. So back in September last year, uh, basically I come across a guy who I noticed was specialised in Shopify. And I'm, I'm showing me age here and I... Uh, being naive, but I'd never heard of Shopify, so I caught up with him for a coffee. Well, for those who haven't, it's a it's a web it's a content management system for e commerce based websites. Yeah, so caught up for a coffee. Uh, this gentleman, Sean, gave me some advice on what he would do if he was starting a new online business. Was print on demand? Uh, I said, "What's on print on demand?" <laughs> so there's so many firsts, but I basically come home, jumped on the computer. Googled Shopify and and just was blown away by the amount of apps and uh, so I, yeah set up an account and thought I'll I'll have a crack at this so I said have a crack at what <laughs> you can't just build a Shopify website without knowing what you're going to freaking sell so, yeah so. Well, I said to the wife I'm going to come up with a name I said it'll be silly you know it doesn't really mean anything but I want to at that stage I had the smile thought in my head uh, I'd always wanted to call a pet a human name. So they'd never, the family had never let me call it Michael or Trevor. Or I have the same aff- affliction. I think it'd be hilarious to see a horse called Cameron or Michelle. <laughs> That's right. I think there should be more of it. I do too. So, yeah, in between that and the conversation with my daughter, that's where the name Small Fred come up. And initially the idea was to uh, create merch and do the print-on-demand model through Shopify. So I... Just through learning Google, talking to people, uh, I set up the website to start to do merch, uh, started designing, uh, found out that I'm no graphic designer. Uh, it all looked terrible. And then when we placed our first couple of orders, they they took six, eight weeks to get here. And so I thought, well, that's not going to cut it in this day and age. Wayne, had you done any numbers? Had you crunched any numbers on the idea of doing print-on-demand essentially promotional merchandise or you had you just seen that, hey, shit, within Spotify, I can do this pretty quickly. I think I'll just go ahead and order some some merch. <laughs> Which way did you go? I, I'm certainly one to operate from the heart, so don't be embarrassed. Oh, mate, I'm a, I'm a ideas man and a, a from the heart man, I guess. You know, the reason I got into trouble is I'm not so great a, a numbers man. You know, I... I grow businesses by continuing to try ideas. At times I've done well, put that into, you know, property or investments and some have worked, some haven't. But, yeah, I I, I know my areas of strength and weakness in business. Uh, I love creating ideas and I love uh, implementing those ideas and and just having a crack, I suppose. The on-demand merch doesn't work. You don't give up. You then go, well, what else can we do on demand? Is that kind of where it came from? Or was there another angle that inspired Smile Fred? No, basically a a mate of mine wanted to catch up for lunch. Uh, He said he just had to pop down to Grand Central, buy a card, fill it out, and then go to the post office to send it to a customer. And it just popped into my head, well, why can't I do that online? And it'll take five minutes. And, yeah, so at first we started looking around at Vista Print and, you know, different ideas to be able to, I thought at that stage, again, I'm new to the online world. At that stage, I thought we'd buy a whole heap of cards, people would submit their message, we'd fill it all out and then us take it to the post office to do it. So, but uh, I guess doing what I do, I just keep digging and finding ways. I found a company to be able to link in with. To link in with what? Uh, So basically we had to, and again, all this is (laughs) pretty new to me, but I, I had to... Uh, worker set up an API between our Ooh, Shopify store. API, <laughs> hello. Yes. What's that stand so, for? 
No idea. I did, but I, nor do I. <laughs> I've said ABI. I know what you're referring to, but I've got no idea where, what it is. <laughs> yeah, I think it's something to do with integration. But, yes, um, it is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I got told by the supplier that could do what I wanted to do, that we need an API. Um, I found a couple of websites like Fiverr, Upwork, uh, trialled a couple of people that did a very poor job. Uh, it's a it's a bit of a long story, but I ended up coming across a, a gentleman in Pakistan who uh, it took a couple of months to be able to nail the API side of things. Just describe Smile Fred in a couple. What's the pitch for Smile Fred? I mean, it was very obvious in the video we played at the top of the interview, Wayne, but it's on demand gift cards thank you cards and gift boxes. You go to smilefred.com um, you, it, and it's beautifully simple. Well done. I mean, I know it's really early days, um, but, you know, you simply pick a card or pick a gift, type a message, um, pay, and then you get that order. Um, and you've kindly done some for me, which I thought were absolutely fantastic. What happens at the back end? Where's, what, tell me about the magic. It's like asking a magician to reveal his magic trick, but... Um, do you print the card and handwrite it and then send it? It's electronically written in the card to look like handwriting. Uh, so basically when you when you select your card, uh, you type out your message, but it looks like handwriting in the inside of the card, and then that card gets posted out in the mail. This is not – I think it's brilliant. It's not a new idea, though. Um, I told you – Last week when we were talking, I, I was heavily involved in send-out cards many years ago. In fact, interviewed um, Cody Bateman, the owner of the founder of Send Out Cards. Like you say, Vistaprint do it. There's a crowd out of UK, Moon Pig or Moon Dog or Moon Pig. Uh, and I'm sure there are others if we dug around. Doesn't mean it's not a bad idea. But what made you think Smile Fred is a good idea? Basically, when I was at Xerox, I, I found it rather difficult to be able to easily send different thank you gifts to clients. So uh, I know there's a market there from from my 10 years experience of, of selling to clients uh, to be able to just quickly and easily send different levels of clients, different types of gifts. Uh, for us, you know, a lot of it happened at Christmas time, but when somebody had buy a new photocopier and we just wanted to thank them, uh, you either had to have a whole heap of uh, stock pre-ordered. Uh, you'd have to have cards printed up. You'd have to have somebody in the team fill out the cards. So that was in the back of my mind the whole time when I was creating it. So we've got the front end where people can just order ordinary gifts, ordinary cards. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I really wanted to work on the business to business side of things because I just think there's got to be thousands of people out there like me that need to easily thank a client. So just to understand that, because again, I'm holding one in my hand that you sent me, the postcard. For businesses, you can design and print a quantity of thank you cards or postcards or whatever it may be, whatever they want, for them to then go to your system and at any time, day or night, write a message and, and dispatch it with their own branding on it. Or they could just choose a, a card as if they were at the news agent. Yeah, so that's exactly right. But what I wanted to do was also make it easy for businesses to come on board. So all a business has to do, there's no charge up front to be able to create their cards. All I need is their website. So if if I've got your website, I've got an online graphic design company in uh, Canada that I work with. Uh, I send them your website. They'll create a set of six cards for you as well as the cards that go in the gift box. So it's all branded exactly for your business. And so I'll then send you a link to the back end of Small Fred so that you can easily go into the back end of our website, select your own branded card, write a message, send it to the client. So it couldn't be any easier. You don't have to get your graphic design company to create the cards. We can do all that for you to match the branding on your website. The, the website that you've created, bootstrapped, because I understand you're spending like 200 bucks a week. What, what, what have you sunk to get the website to where it is right now, smilefred.com? Yeah, nearly 25,000. Okay, that seems about right. What I love about what you've done, Wayne, and it, I don't interview startups. It's not There's enough podcasts doing startups, and 
sometimes I've taken the view that there's not as much learning for my listeners from a startup as there is from an established business. However, I've made an exception for you for a whole lot of reasons, but one, I, I think Smile Friends is a great idea. I think businesses alone, forget individuals who can send birthday cards and thank you cards, businesses alone will benefit hugely from something like this. Uh, so I love the idea, but but I just really love the way you've had a crack at bringing this to life because not only have you got a pretty nice looking website and Shopify has enabled that, I get that. You've gone and got a character designed. Fred, I guess his name's Fred, but this is a this is an animated character who also in the video is wearing an oversized suit costume dressed up as the character. Um, you've got some professional videos made on that website. The why video that I played at the start of this interview, there's another video on another page for business packs where a, a boss is, you know, giving something to one of his employees for working late at night. Mate, you, you've really gone hard. I think it's really impressive. It's a very good first iteration. Yeah, I, I guess I'm a bit of a perfectionist from that point yeah. of view. I'm all, always looking at it. Uh, I'm trying to have it, uh, again, bootstrapping. I'm trying to have it look as professional as I can. I was lucky to get some commission from uh, the digital signage displays last year that I could put towards the videos and put towards the, the costume. Uh, my idea initially, which starting real estate has sort of put a bit of a, a stop to that, uh, but my initial idea was to deliver gifts dressed up as Small Fred. That's why I got the costume. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go shopping as Small Fred and do a whole host of things with Small Fred, but yeah. What is your thinking about the character? Because um, you don't see many characters built around a brand. You know, these days, they they seem to be few and far between. Maybe that's a good idea. It'll certainly have you stand out. Yeah, for sure. Look, I, I'm, as you've seen from dressing up as a girl video, I'm not afraid to <laughs> take right. the, take a few risks and dress up. Uh, my initial thought was, you know, if I'm going to a business networking chamber of commerce, you know, I'm obviously going to draw a lot more attention to small Fred if I'm dressed up as Fred rather than me handing business cards out. Uh, so it's more just a local marketing strategy. but. Over time, I hope to build up a series of TikToks videos with Fred doing, you know, weird and wonderful things and hopefully just continues to grow the brand. I, I look at your offering, Wayne, and I wonder, and I just wonder, and it's certainly not advice yet, but you offer a lot. you got cards, gift cards, gift boxes, business packs. So really, small Fred right now is something, there's something there for it, anything for everyone, if you like. And maybe you're trying to whether you maybe you're trying to appeal too broadly. I don't know. I think probably six months down the track, you'll have a sense of oh, we, we, we're mainly selling to businesses, or we're mainly doing gift cards, or you'll get a sense of that eighty. The eighty twenty rule will come into play, no doubt. But did you ever give consideration maybe that Smile Fred should be personalised cards and gift packs for small business owners, or you know, niching it down to something? A little bit tighter. Yeah, it's it's a hard one. I I do have lots of ideas, and I, I I'm continually thinking of adding things onto there now. So I, I've got to stop that side of me. Um, <clears throat> I got some advice from a, a mate Ian early on that because I don't have any money to spread it via paid Google and Facebook ads to be able to grow the site. That if I send the packs and cards to businesses, they'll send it to consumers to use the front end of the site. So that's certainly my my main marketing strategy at the moment is to try to bring as many businesses that I can on. I, I would have thought that's where the volume is. First of all, a business, you know, they got they got the dough. They prop, there's probably quantities there. You know, one business is probably, you know, depending on size, but they're going to send multiple cards where individuals may send one card or two cards every now and then. Yeah, the front end of the website's more, if I can say this, like a retirement plan. I, I really hope not to start another business. No uh, doubt. I, I do enjoy it, but I'd love to, you know, over the next 15, 20 years, turn this into a retirement plan where the, the greeting card side of things happens without us touching it. So you, you place an order for a card, it goes out to your customer. We can send to 55 countries around the world. Uh, I hope, you know, in 15 years we're, sell, we're selling tens of thousands of cards a month. Um, but I'll just continue to work on the business to business. I enjoy dealing with business people. I think I've got a, 
a good reputation over 20 years in Toowoomba of doing the right thing and looking after clients. Even real estate, having that real estate background now, which is relatively new, but even like a niche like real estate, it's, it's quite a, it's, it's an inch wide, but it's a mile deep. And every single real estate agent needs Smile Fred, you know? Every car salesman needs Smile Fred. Every insurance salesman needs Smile Fred. It's quite interesting uh, where this could go. And I get the fact that you've probably cast a broad net at the start, see what gets traction. Interesting being a fellow like you who's full of ideas. How do you control that? Does your wife go, Wayne, enough, focus, look at me, look at me? Uh, or do you just haphazardly go, no, nah, there's a bright, shiny object, add that to the website? Well, I'm not sure she listens to me anymore, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you don't listen uh, to her. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I am very focused in what I'm doing at the moment. So, uh, I, uh, I've just got to continue to go down the path that I'm going on. Um, yeah, there's there's other things that I could bring into it later on down the track, but if I can't get the initial offering to work, there's no point thinking of other, you know, bits and pieces to add onto it. Just going back to that question earlier, Wayne. And it, it, it's not a. Ne- I'm not coming at it from a negative point of view, but I am interested to a point of difference kind of question. The Vista Print are doing it. Moonpig are doing it. Send out cards are around in some way, shape, or form. Um, what what makes Smile Fred? What why should people use Smile Fred? It's a it's a confronting question. I get it, but yeah, from my research, and again, Google's a, a pretty big place. Uh, there's potentially competitors out there that are doing what I'm doing, but the, my major point of difference is that all of those card companies are just doing cards. So you can have your branded business card. Uh, through any of those, and and they're just concentrating on cards where all of the gift box companies appear to just be comp, uh, concentrating on gift boxes. So I'd, I'd like to think for a business, our offering is the fact that if you've got a very small client that you just wanted to say thank you or you wanted to send a birthday card to a uh, one of your employees, you can do that through the same system as what you can send a large gift box to a good client that's just come on. Uh, the fact that it's all branded with your branding uh, ready to go rather than small Fred branding, uh, that's that's really our point of difference. 200 bucks a week, you've, you are very much bootstrapping. Uh, I had an interview earlier with a lady by the name of Carol. She owns Belly Bands um, and she also had to bootstrap and she said, she went from actually having a whole lot of dough to start the business. She had 500 grand to start the business and she lost it all. She didn't give up though. And she said bootstrapping was the best thing ever because it forced you to think very, very hard about how you are going to spend every dollar, certainly on your marketing. Have you found bootstrapping to be a pain in the ass or actually a blessing? Oh, a little bit of both. Uh, like I say, uh, for 20 years, I've grown businesses through borrowing working hard, paying off the debt, and then borrowing again. Now, being bankrupt at the moment, I can't do that. I can't borrow. So I've, I've literally got no other choice And until real estate starts to work for me, which I think will, you know, to do it well, will take five years. Uh, I've got no other choice but to, to grow it in this way. So I think that's great in that the I said to the accountant when we went under, I said, am I, am I a bad businessman, bad salesman? Should I do this again? And his advice to me was, Wayne, I think you're a great salesman. Uh, you're good at business. You're great with ideas. But he said, you keep starting capital extensive businesses with no capital. So the the whole idea of this business uh, is that we, you know, we don't need a lot of capital to get started. And I can just input everything that we make back into growing the business to spread. So it's certainly a blessing from that point of view. Can I encourage you, if you haven't already, to read John Warrillow's book, Built to Sell. I interviewed John about a year ago, um, New York Times bestseller. It's a classic book, It's and it, it's an easy read. Two, three hours will do it. 17 points every business owner should attend to to create a business to sell. And often what happens is you don't want to sell it at the end because it's such a bloody good business. You fall back in love with it. But you're at such a great point. Yeah, and, and you don't have to read that book at the start of your business journey, but you have the luxury of being able to do that. And um, little things like, you know, putting systems and processes in place, stuff like that, you know, once and for all, because it makes it a very compelling um, business to buy if, if things like that are all set in stone. 
and that's what I'd love. You know, obviously, you uh, once you're online, looking at Shopify stores and online businesses, you know, you and LinkedIn, you you see all the success stories, and you know, I, I look at those every day, and would love to think over the next 10, 15 years, I can turn Small Fred into something that you know we can set our family up with. Mate, I I, I hope so too. I don't really see why not. You know, you seem like the kind of bloke who's going to really give it. You're not going to leave anything, uh, you know, any stone unturned in order to make this work. Probably you've got to make some smart decisions and not just apply every idea that comes to mind. Good luck with that. Um, but it, it, it's an idea that I think is right for its time. I think, again, in that video, you know, uh, or might have been the email that you sent me, but, you know, we do. We get it. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails a day. Well, not, maybe that's an exaggeration. Maybe some people do. Um, and it's an ineffective way of communicating uh, if you want to get someone's attention. But a handwritten card in the mail with a stamp, possibly with a gift or a gift card, that's a bit of a game changer. And and again, in a, in a world where, you know, everything does seem to be going wrong, there are a lot of things going right. And this little kind of smile, Fred idea is sort of a little positivity positivity injection so mate i fully encourage you and again that's why i got you on because i'm, I'm just in awe and of people like you who are willing to just roll the sleeves up dust themselves off and have another crack thanks very much tim I, it's been an honor coming on uh, like i said to you when you rung on monday <laughs> i mainly sent you an email thinking i might be a chance at the, the gift back i didn't expect to get interviewed <laughs> <laughs> not so. at all mate no i'm i'm honored to have had you on so listen uh Business owners listening, of which that is all of you, please go and check out smilefred.com and uh, at least send one card. Try it out. Well, A, to try it out and see how effective it can be as a marketing tool in your business, but also it'll just make you feel good because you'll be thanking someone that you probably haven't got around to thanking for a very long time, and that's not a bad thing either. Wayne Hamlet, go get him. Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate you helping us spread the word. Well, there you go, team. Smile Fred's Wayne Hamlet. Hope you're feeling inspired. I certainly am. I'm going to encourage you all to head over to smilefred.com and at the very least, send someone you care about a card. Or if you're feeling generous, take a look at Smile Fred's business packs. They're very, very good. And Wayne told me after the interview, all he needs to do is get two, three or four of those sold and he'll be able to cash flow his business and build it into something that he truly wants it to be. So have a look at his business packs over at smilefred.com. And if you'd like to see Wayne dressed in drag in a last-ditch effort to save his last business, then head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 598. But a warning, once you've watched it, you can't unsee it. You know what I loved most about chatting with Wayne? His never, ever give up attitude. It's awesome. I reckon it'll set him in really, really good stead to make Smile Fred a huge success. I certainly hope so. He deserves it. Let me know what grabbed your attention from my chat with Wayne, or maybe you want to share a marketing idea that's working for you. Call the Small Business Big Marketing Hotline on 0480 015 150, just like long, long, long-time listener Cindy did. Hey, Tim, it's Cindy from Adubra Plumbing. I just wanted to compliment you on your personal growth through listening to your podcast. Um, two podcasts that stick out to me recently that I've listened to is the Loom Croissant um, interview with the lovely lady. I love that you kept it so real and so raw and the honesty just was so authentic throughout that interview. It was just amazing. Thank you. And I've also just listened to um, Jason from the asbestos issue and him sharing about his struggles with, well, not so much his, but yeah, his brother's struggles with um, mental health and also being in business. It's a really massive issue. And I tell you what, I could just feel your compassion oozing through the podcast and the personal growth that I think you have also done since I ever started first listening to you many years ago. It was touching and it was done in a really very authentic and kind way. Thanks for spreading the message. Thank you very much for all of the information that you share with us all the time. Um, I'm really grateful and it's a massive resource. Who needs to go to university when they've got Tim Reed's podcast? Thanks, Tim. Have a great day. Bye. Oh, 
Cindy, what can I say? Thank you just for a beautiful message. Thank you for recognizing maybe some of the personal growth that I've done, uh, the maturing that I've done. Probably still like a 22-year-old boy in my head in a 55-year-old man's body. But yeah, I think probably there's a little bit of wisdom starting to show. You know, as business owners, our mental health is everything. A few episodes ago, I sort of came clean that I'd been doing it a bit tough with the old anxiety and all that kind of stuff. And hey, part of the human condition. But if we don't speak about it, if we don't recognize it, if we don't talk to others, we let it boil up, it'll boil over. Don't let it. Cindy, your ace. Thank you. Everyone else, be like Cindy. Call me 0480 015 150. Tell me what marketing's working for you. Tell me how your day's been. Tell me what episode you've loved and why. Tell me what I could be doing better. Be nice. I'm temperamental. <laughs> 0480 015 150. Next week, you and I catch up with an international lawyer who specializes in helping Aussie businesses of all shapes and sizes succeed in overseas markets. You might think you're too small. You're not. You might think you're too old. You're not. Just have a listen. It's quite interesting. And it opens up whole new revenue streams if you follow her process. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a review on your favorite podcast app, please, 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 where you'll find 597 more chats with successful business founders. If you're ready to create some helpful marketing, buy my book, The Boomerang Effect, over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. And finally, this show is edited by the amazing Alex Amster, the music bed written, sung, produced by rock star Lockie Doley. This episode was made possible by the very, very, very good people at Dell and Studio One Designs who genuinely care about us small business owners. Thank you to those two businesses. And thank you for tuning in. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.